This week on Maker Update, a plotter painter, a vintage camera flash clock, a rotary cell phone, a breadboard bender, and foaming filament. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I missed y'all last week. I hope you're doing great. I have a lot to catch you up on, so let's get started with the project of the week. Alexander Leiser created this art plotter that uses common acrylic paint to create these cool works of art. The instructions recreating this are posted on Thingiverse, and what's cool is that it's possible to adapt any 3D printer to do the same thing. But to paint bigger images like this, you'll want to use a plotter or create something custom like Alexander did. The magic here is really creating the G-code, which not only requires some image processing to simplify the artwork and figure out what colors go where, but also builds in a paintbrush cleaning between colors, dipping the brush in water and wiping across a sponge or towel. It reminds me a lot of the Watercolor Bot Plotter by Evil Mad Scientist, only this one is geared for a different type of paint and uses a different software for processing called PaintCam that you can also download from Alex's Thingiverse page. I love it when robots get artsy, so I'm excited to see another paint plotter project out there. It's also just inspiring when you catch someone like Alex here right in the grip of their creative obsession. I'm excited to see where this goes. Now for more projects on Instructables, Lone Soul Surfer made this cool retro desk clock from an old camera flash. Apparently he has a nice little collection of these, so he went shopping around for an inexpensive seven segment clock module that he could fit inside. It's a fun little hack to know about and opens up some possibilities for other vintage collectible things that you could repurpose as clocks. Just put a clock in it. For another wonderfully retro project, check out this rotary cell phone made by Justine Hopped. The phone uses a custom circuit board with an Arduino compatible Atmega 2560V chip as its main brain. An Adafruit Phona 3G board provides a cellular connection. There's also some fun use of e-paper on the back that you can program, display, whatever you want. You can find instructions on our website as well as a DIY kit that you can buy to skip over the whole business of ordering and assembling the PCB. Now for some tips and tools. First, just another reminder that Hackspace Magazine has slashed their US subscription prices in half to just $60 for a one year, 12 issue subscription plus a free Adafruit Circuit Playground Express board. They're not paying me to say this, I just think it's a great magazine and I'm excited to see it finally be affordable for us. That said, I still have a lot of love for Make Magazine. They have a new issue out with a focus on taking IoT privacy under your control Executive Editor Mike Sinisi has a video up that offers a quick overview of what's inside. Via Hackaday, I found this 3D printed jig from Moon on Our Nation that helps you perfectly form solid core wire to fit neatly on your breadboard. You insert one stripped end of wire in a hole that matches the desired length you need, you bend it over the end, and then cut and strip that end for a perfect fit. It turns out to be kind of an old school tool, but I haven't seen one before, so maybe it's a treat for you too. On YouTube, CNC Kitchen takes a look at a new lightweight foaming PLA filament from ColorFab. The filament includes what's called a blowing agent that creates uniform microscopic bubbles in the material as it prints. The effect can be exaggerated or toned down by adjusting the temperature of your extruder. For the right project, it looks like a good option for minimizing weight and adding some extra flexibility without sacrificing strength. On the Cool Tools channel, I've got a new video up with woodworker Paolo Coleman, who explains why he prefers Japanese-style framing squares, also known as sashigani. They're light and have enough give to them that they're more adaptable than a traditional square. It's worth a look. Adam Savage has another favorite tools video out that talks about an inexpensive set of automatic wire strippers that he enjoys. And in Gareth Branwin's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter, he's got a great one from Emery Kimbrough, on finding the highest point on a cylinder or pipe or even a sphere using a drill press, a spade bit, and a ruler. It's a neat concept I hadn't seen before. In this week's DigiKey Spotlight, they have a new video out on the basics and types of DC fans that you might want to use in your projects. Axial, case fans, blower fans, squirrel cage blowers, impellers. You get a sense for each type and what they might be able to do for you. Check it out. All right, that does it for this week's show. Next week, be excited because one of my favorite people, Sophie Wong, will be guest hosting the show again. Give her a warm welcome and be sure to subscribe to the DigiKey YouTube channel so that you don't miss that show or you can get on the Maker Up the email list so that you never miss a show again. All right. 
Also, happening early next week, we've got the Adafruit edition of Maker Update coming out on the Adafruit channel, hosted by the equally amazing Tyler Weingarner. That show is always a treat, so don't miss that. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.